Good evening. Good evening. Everybody got enough to eat? Yep. No? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so tonight uh, we're going to be talking about a fairly familiar topic, hearing from God. And um, I mean, I mean, you believe that God still speaks today. So, um, and actually, uh, uh, I just, because I want to, we, I should make mention, because I think we should, how many of you are keeping up on your devotion? How do you know if you're keeping up on your devotion? Do you, do you call your neighbor and find out, hey, did you make it to, to day three or day four? How are you doing? Um, just so you know, you can only do as fast as you can go. But I will, I will guarantee you, if you did today's, this is day four of week what? Two. 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 Um, I, here's, the, here's a big question. Do not answer unless you're telling the truth. Are you being honest with yourselves? Yes. And are you being honest with God? Yes. Because uh, that's that's what this is all about. You know about learning how to be honest and, and um, because I can tell you, you know, I mean, this this is really sad. Did you know? Statistically speaking, I read this again. Of course, you know it's just the numbers. Is that right? There's just a number. Did you know that statistically speaking, eighty percent of most believers are liars. Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, um, many many say that they pray. They have they have this they have a, a, a disciplined devotional life. When you don't, but you want to give the answer because you want to be made to look like something else. Now, if I'm speaking to you tonight and what I just said, you'll say, "Oh, that sounds like something I just read in the in the study." See, the idea here is we, 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 why do we tell, what, it's, it's like this, why is it that when someone asks you a question, um, you want to give the answer that they want, or you think they want? Does anybody in here like someone just to lie to them? No. No. Okay. But wait a minute. Did you know that's usually not the, the thing? Usually what it is is that we have a tendency of not being honest. Please. And it began all the way back in the garden. It's a, it actually, uh, there, there was a question in, in uh, today's reading, and it talked about Adam uh, and, and what happened in the garden, and it asked about what you thought. And some of you, if you if you've got there, this is going to sound familiar to you. What was God's intent? Why, why did he ask Adam when he came down, Adam, where are you? What was his? What was he doing? What was his purpose? And I'm going to ask you to tell me that. But right now, how many of you know that? Hey, I remember reading that today. So um, if you didn't remember reading it, then you need to go back right now because here's the other thing you need to do. You need to slow down enough, not to just run over the words. Because the Bible, the Bible talks about writing it on the tablets of your heart. All right. And if we just, well, I read it. Okay, but what did it speak to you? Did you and did, and did you ask God to to uh, to help you to understand what He's saying? And uh, of course, tonight we're going to talk about. Well, and I have a question for you. Do you think tonight, honestly, that you can hear God's voice? Yeah. Now, I'm not going to tell you it's like something I heard in my ear, hearing. Sometimes I I, I tell you, I really thought I heard an audible voice. Can't say that it was, um, but it sure seemed like it was. I've had I've had times where I thought uh, I've had I, I was and I wasn't I wasn't in the church I was somewhere else and I asked a question I thought I heard an answer mm -hmm. and you know it kind of sounds like you know something kind of creepy right but it's not because when I when I realized what was going on someone said well you know it's just a figment of your imagination and yes Adam talks about on day two of next week today is the Second week, and it's uh, okay. I may be on the head of you. Well, it could be. What week are you in? I'm in week two. Okay, day four humility is necessary. Oh, yeah, that, it, well, I got that too. Okay, all right, but real quick, what spoke to you in, about humility? It's necessary to, to be one of God's chosen ones. He wants us to always humble ourselves before Him. This week's verse is. Those who Everyone exalt themselves will be humbled. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. Luke chapter 14, verse 11. All right. That wasn't too hard, was it? No. So, 
Let's, uh, I've got, I have a, a video of it we're going to watch as well. Um, but before we do that, can we, can we pray? How many, how many want to pray tonight? Amen. If you can stand, would you stand with me tonight? Yes. We pray. I would like to pray for my uh, eye. I've been having problems with my eye. It's still dry, and I can yeah, barely see right. out of it. Oh. it and I washed it out with visine and a couple of days in a row, and it's still yet. It's so well up in here for some reason. It feels mm. like it's got a scratch on it or something. Well, let's pray right now. Yes. I have the same problem. Blood and you not. I'm okay this morning, but as the day drags on, yeah, um, everything you put up here, where I can, I can just start out. Might want to start memorizing stuff, huh? <laughs> but let's pray for that as well. So I, tonight, this is, I'm, I'm hearing a common theme here. I mean, you need to pray for vision. Yes. yes. Amen. Let's go to the Lord right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we gather here tonight. Lord, first we come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, your Son. And Lord, according to the Word of God, that we can come seeking wisdom from you. And Lord, we can come seeking healing. God, we can come, come seeking help in a time of need. And tonight, Lord, we're focusing on, on hearing your voice, but we also want to see what you're saying. And Lord, to bring it to to bring it, Lord, to something that we can really identify with. We have those tonight who have problems with their eyes. We ask tonight, God, that you would not only open our hearts that we might hear your word, but that God, that you might touch our eyes that we might see. That God, that you might even restore the sight of, of those who vision is, uh, is, been, uh, is either failing or is weakened or is, it's under some other sort of attack. Lord, for Sister Rose tonight, Lord, whatever the irritant is right now, we come against the ir irritant in the name of Jesus, but we're summoning, well, we're crying to God right now because we're looking for the healing virtue that flows from the throne room of grace. Lord, that you would touch Brother William and all those that are here tonight, Lord, that have infirmities and illnesses and sicknesses in their bodies. Lord, I know, God, that you are there. I know, Father, that you speak to us. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, according to your scripture, Lord, tonight we take, we take authority over ourselves. Lord, we have to take responsibility. We have to take authority but tonight we also surrender that authority to you lord i submit my voice tonight lord jesus under the shed blood of jesus yes lord and i submit my thoughts lord under the shed blood of jesus that they be taken captive into the obedience of christ who is my king and lord according to second corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 lord i ask that not only your holy spirit will speak to us now Lord, as, as we wait on you for wisdom, as we wait on you for insight, as we're expecting God for a move to be healed, Lord, as we're looking for direction, and whatever, Lord, that you show us, whatever that you show me, whatever you direct us to do, Lord, I pray that I will quickly obey. And God, we pray tonight, Lord, that our bodies will respond to the healing virtue of the Holy Spirit as he comes here tonight. Lord, that you would touch, Lord, that you would visit us. That God, that you would be present for here and now yes. in the in the land of the living, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And the church all said, "Amen." Amen. 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 Yeah, I'm going to play the video first. So if you would just sit back and relax, and all eyes on the TV. How to hear the voice of God? One of the greatest benefits of our salvation has to be that of hearing God speak to us personally. There cannot be an intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father without us crying and speaking to Him, and Him speaking back to us. Those who teach and have studied theology say that prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. But as easy as it is for believers to speak to Him, the average Christian has a hard time hearing God's voice. This is not the way the Lord intended it to be. God is able to speak to us in that dramatic, cinematic, resounding voice, but that is not always the way it happens. God can speak to us through dreams, visions, through the scriptures, through the prophets, through his audible voice, angels, and miracles. He is known to have spoken through a burning bush, a donkey, and as a voice out of the clouds. God is not limited in the ways he can communicate or speak with us. As children of God, there is something we need to take note of. 
We may hear ourselves and think it is God speaking to us, or we may hear Satan. In other words, the three can speak to us at one point or another. It is therefore paramount that one is able to distinguish who is speaking at that given time. This is because the same word of God warns and instructs us to test the spirits. 1 John 4 verse 1 Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. We should be sensitive to determine which spirit is speaking to us, as the devil is the father of counterfeits, deception, and lies, and he will do all he can to deceive the children of God if they are not careful. And the word of God warns us that many false prophets have gone out into the world. Jesus described our relationship with him in John 10 as being that of a shepherd and his sheep that recognize the shepherd's voice. My sheep listen to my voice. I call each one by name. I lead them out and they follow me because they know my voice. I open and close gates for them. They come in and find safe pasture and they go out with me in the path of righteousness. I give them life, my life, real life from God that is abundant and eternal. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. John 10 verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Notice how the Word of God says, My sheep hear my voice. It does not say, My sheep can hear my voice, or should hear my voice. Jesus knows that he speaks to his sheep, and his sheep hears the master's voice. Most Christians would question the accuracy of that statement, since their experiences don't line up. But it's not what Jesus said that is wrong. All true believers can and do hear the voice of God. The problem is, failure to recognize that what they are hearing as being God's voice. Listening to clearly distinguish God's voice is invaluable. Instead of going through life blindly, we can have the wisdom to ask God to guide and protect us. Hearing God's voice will radically transform the life of a believer. The Lord constantly speaks to us and gives us his direction. It's never the Lord who is not speaking but it is us who are not hearing. One major reason is failure to be properly connected or not having the spirit